So what's going on guys kids here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I'll show you the best Destiny 2 tier list in 2024. This game in general has huge amount of fun and overpowered classes and subclasses to play. And we have a very unique variety to choose from. But the big question is, which classes are actually good for the specific activities that you want to do? So I've done a bunch of testing and as you'll spend a lot of time building and developing your character in Destiny 2, so it is a really good choice to try to understand the nuance of each subclass and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first subclass, which is the Night Stalker. And we will place him right in the S plus tier. This one specializes in invisibility, which the player can also grant to their allies. My favorite ability is the Shadow Shoot Deadfall, which will tether a large group of enemies to avoid anchor, which will slow and silence them. This skill has been very popular for hunters in PvE activities, where you can come up against large numbers of enemies. So if you want to be that stealthy slash assassin type of player, then this is the class for you. Then for the second subclass we have the Downblade, and we will put him right in the S plus tier. The Downblade subclass is an excellent choice for newer players because of its straightforward and easy to learn Daybreak Super ability, and the Veil of Radiance ability which is also a powerful group ability that can be deployed to deal massive damage to a single target. One of his best aspects is the Heat Rises, which will allow you to fire weapons, melee and throw grenades while gliding. This class is outfitted with an area of abilities that encourage players to engage their targets from the sky. Then for the next one we have the Sunbreaker and he gets to be right in the S tier. This one will give you a Hammer of Assault ability that is powerful for both PvE and PvP because you will be able to summon a Troubleable Hammer that shatters into the molten shards on impact and does massive amounts of damage. And then you will get the second super ability called the Burning Maul, and this will summon a Flaming Maul and crush our enemies with the force of an earthquake. Players can either spin the maul around them or slam them into the ground. Overall the Sunbreaker is the perfect choice for players that enjoy and want to play in both PvP and PvE with the same character. Then for the next subclass we have the Treadrunner that gets to be placed right next to the Sunbreaker. The Hunter Treadrunner leverages Strand by turning it into a chain-like tool that helps in movement but can also deal significant damage. Silk Strike Super Ability will give you the option to use a grapple to move around in third person, throwing and spinning the rope dart to harm enemies and manipulate the world around them. Your best aspect is the Ensnagering Slam, which will press the air move input while in mid-air, causing the Hunter to slam downwards to suspend all nearby enemies and that's about it. Then for the 5th subclass we have the Sentinel, and we will put him right in the S tier. This one mainly focuses on the Titan's defensive abilities. Players can upgrade the Titan's overshield perks with fragments for even more strength. Your Ward of Dawn ability will create an indestructible dome that also provides a temporarily increase in weapon damage, where then you get to use the Sentinel Shield ability, which will give you a Void Light Shield with options to attack, defend, throw and create a defensive wall that grants increased weapon damage to allies when shooting through it and much more. Overall the Sentinel is mainly made for your support slash defensive oriented playstyle and builds. So then moving over to the next one which is the Arc Strider and we want to include him right next to the Sentinel. This subclass will build the Arc Staff. Its effectiveness depends on the player's ability to pull off strong combos and stay mobile. Arc Energy Staff will give you the ability to use acrobatic melee combos and you will get a chance to deflect incoming projectiles, while your Gathering Storm Super ability will throw an Arc Staff forwards, lodging it into the surfaces and jolting nearby targets. Overall the Arc Strider is a fun class that main focus is on combos and the Arc Staff ability. So then moving over to the last and final S tier subclass and it is the Void Walker. The subclass by using the Void Souls and Devour buff will give you the ability to steal health from the enemies. However, a player can instead choose to optimize grenades for maximum damage. When combined with effective perks, additional grenade damage can be contributed to a melee ability regeneration. Overall, the Voidwalker is able to use the life force of their victims to fuel explosive power, 
and with his powerful abilities, he can create a widespread destruction on the enemy forces. So then moving over to the next subclass, which is the Striker, and we want to include him right in the A tier. This subclass gets a Fist of Havoc, which is a powerful super ability that is good for both offense and defense. You will be able to use the Supercharge Electric Ground Slam. Then you will activate the Grenade button to quickly charge forward with an attack, or the melee button to slam fist in the ground to deal massive amounts of AoE damage. Or then we can even use the Thunder Crash ability, which will hurtle through the air to inflict damage like a missile. Overall the Shocker is the perfect choice for players that want to be tanky but very strong at the same time. You mostly won't do the highest damage possible, but you will get that perfect balance between damage and armor. So then for the 9th subclass we have the Berserker, and we want to include him right in the A tier. This subclass is all about untamed power with the Titan using the Fist of the Unleashed the Fury. Your most powerful super ability is the Blade Fury, which will summon a stasis gauntlet that the player can slam for a shockwave that freezes the target, or you can use it as a light attack option, that the player can subcharge their Shiver Strike melee for a massive damage. Plus you can sprint through the stasis crystals or froze the target, which will shatter them and much more. Overall this is another powerful subclass, which playstyle is more focused on subcharging and using fists for a massive melee damage. So then moving over to the next subclass, which is the Gunslinger, and we want to put him right next to the Berserker, which is the most popular for PvP content, because of the Golden Guns ability, that will quickly wipe an entire enemy team, although some people prefer the sharp volley of a Blade Barrage. Golden Gun ability will shoot a rapid fire pistol, that disintegrates targets causing ignition, and while the super ability is active, you will receive back a Golden Gun round, Overall the Gunslinger is amazing PvP subclass, with high damage and very good dodge and movement abilities for shoot and run type of playstyle. So then moving over to the next subclass which is the Remnant, and he gets to be placed right in the B tier. Many players consider this subclass as too overpowered build, primarily because of its flexibility and the ability to pair well with various modifiers, from various weapons, armors and fragments. You also get the Silence and Squall Super ability, which you can channel Stasis Shards to form Akama Blades, the first one which will bounce off the enemies and freeze them, before the second one detonates on impact, creating a Stasis Storm. Being able to easily freeze targets and also cause a storm, paired with the ability to easily shatter Stasis Crystals, makes this one of the most broken PvP subclasses in the game. So then going over to the next subclass, which is the Broad Weaver, and he gets to be placed right in the B tier. This subclass uses the power of the wave to manipulate Treadlings, which are spider-like entities that you can summon and control. Your best ability is the Needle Storm, which will launch strand-based missiles at the enemies, detonating them and spawning Tread Needles, which will attack your enemies. So overall, the Broad Weaver class is your typical summoner player that focuses most of his damage and abilities on spawning minions that will protect you and fight by your side. So then moving over to the last and final B tier class and it is the Shade Binder. This Warlock Stasis subclass is challenging to perfect for newer players, but it is very useful against larger enemy groups. His strongest super ability is the Winter Sprat that summon a Stasis Staff which will cast a stasis shards that freeze the target, then afterwards you can trigger a shockwave to shatter all the frozen targets and much more. Overall the Shadebinder is not a very popular subclass as it takes a lot of time grinding to perfect most builds, but I have seen it used at the most challenging content. So then moving over to the next subclass which is the Bay Mood, and he gets to be right in the C tier. This is the most popular Titan subclass, because you will get an ability that can generate explosive damage from the stasis crystals, and on top of that, this subclass is also incredibly effective in close range fights. Your aspect will give you longer and more powerful slides, while at the same time enabling you to charge melee energy, freeze targets and slam enemies on the ground. So if you want to play the most meta Titan subclass, then this is the one for you. So then going over to the last and final subclass, and it is the Stormcaller. He will give you powerful abilities that can inflict large amounts of damage on the enemy hordes in PvE. 
Storm Color Superability will chain a lightning that electrifies enemies and you will be able to cast a channel beam of arc energy. Overall the Storm Color is mostly used for AoE damage playstyle.